Hello, this is Walter Leite, and in this video, I will show you how to run the code for chapter seven of my book, um, Propensity Score Methods for Continuous Treatment Doses. Um, so here, in this video, I will cover uh, Hirano and Inbase method of uh, dose response function for continuous treatment using the normal density. Um, so assuming that the, 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 the treatment is normally distributed. So um, the example is using a data set from Algebra Nation. Uh, Algebra Nation is a virtual learning environment widely used in, algebra, in, in Florida. And we will um, estimate the effect of students um, student logins in Algebra Nation on their academic achievement in Algebra, okay? So we'll start by loading the Algebra Nation data set. I'll set the working director here first. Um, and then for the data set we have, this is a school level data set, so it's, um, we are looking at the aggregated usage of the students in the school on the um, school level performance. We um, will have a series of continuous covariates. Um, the, uh, at the school level, those include the number of students the, st uh, the school had in 2014, the mean scaled score, which is the outcome two years prior, um, percentage of students that are achieving a certain level, uh, percentage of students in free lunch, and percentage of students in reduced lunch, which are measures of poverty of the student population. So I will standardize those first uh, to make them into z-scores. This is just convenient uh, to help with us evaluating covariate balance. And then I will we have a couple of um, binary covariates here. Uh, first one is the grade level. So we have an indicator of whether this school is senior high or middle high. We'll make them into factors. And then um, there is a, a variable that's a combined size of the city and whether it's rural or, or urban or remote. Um, I will record that into different values, variables. So I have location size and location rural. Okay. Um, so once I create these variables, um, at this point, I will skip the plotting part. Feel free to run on your own. And this is our complete list of covariates in this covariate names vector. Um, so I have, you know, things like whether the school is a charter, a magnet, um, and size and, and other characteristics of the school. And the idea here is that uh, these characteristics are confounders. In other words, they're related to how much the students in that school use algebra nation and also to the performance in algebra of the students in that school. And um, in the first stage to to implement a uh, Hirano and Inbase generalized propensity score method um, is to model the treatment doses. So uh, the treatment, the original treatment was the uh, number of logins per examinee in that school. Um, and I converted that to log logins per examinee um, to account for non-normality. Um, and um, so taking the log of the Logins per exam really helps. Um, here we are assuming that the distribution is approximately normal. Uh, in a different video, I'll show how to use the gamma distribution instead. Okay, so here I'll set up the formula. This is my model for the generalized propensity score. Um, and I, I will use just regression, or generally squares regression, to fit that model. So I have 
API fit model. Let me clear the screen. Take a, look, a quick look here. Summary. Roses. Okay, so we have the model fit. Um, some variables are significant related to treatment dose, uh, but we don't. We don't in propensity score analysis. We don't do variable selection. We leave all variables there. Um, and here it is um, the model for the generalized propensity score. Now, the, the actual generalized propensity score is the density of uh, the treatment dose. So here, because I'm assuming a uh, normal distribution, I'm using the density of the normal distribution. I mean, you know, any density can be used for so, uh, T distribution. Um, I'm here using normal distribution, so I'm using the function d norm in R. Um, and the so um, the norm for the the log 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 is, per example, using as the mean the defeated uh, values for from the model, from the model of treatment doses. So I run that and I get the generalized propensity scores. So we'll do um, summary. Yeah, see it, take a look. So these are our generalized propensity scores here. Um, okay, so now we evaluate covariate balance. Um, there is more than a way of doing this. Here I'm using the method of cutting the generalized propensity scores into strata, into five strata, um, and then looking at the relationship, look at the relationship between um, covariates and the treatment within each strata. So first, this uh, creates the strata for the generalized propensity score using uh, quantiles of the generalized propensity score, okay? Now here I have a code that is a loop to create a balance table. First I create an empty balance table. Um, and then, you know, the loop goes through every single covariate and evaluates covariate balance one by one. So I have um, that my balance formula will be, uh, to, to evaluate covariate balance, I will regress the log log in exam, uh, per examinee on the strata plus each covariate. And what I want to see is that after controlling for the strata of the generalized propensity score, um, the relationship between log log is, for example, and the covariates should be not, uh, should be small, okay? I won't say not significant because statistical significance is not a good, statistical significance is not a good measure of covariate balance because covariate balance is a property of the sample, not of the population. So inference, inferential statistics are really not helpful for covariate balance evaluation. Uh, the reason we use strata of the GPS in this, um, in this model for covariate balance instead of using the GPS itself is that if I use the GPS itself, I would be assuming a linear relationship between the GPS and log log is per exhibit uh, But if I use five strata, I'm be more flexible I'm allowing like some splines. So um, it is, is better than assuming linearity. Okay, so I'll run this loop. The loop starts here, it goes up to here. Um, and we'll calculate the balance for um, all covariates. Okay, so I got a balance table. 
uh, now I just embellish it. Like I add some variable names and I standardize by dividing by the log log ins per exam, by the standard deviation of log log ins per exam. Um, remember the continuous variables were already um, Z scores. So I only need to standardize with respect to Y. Okay, so now um, let's take a look at our covariance table. Um, for the covariance table, uh, I will create here balance, I will type balance table and look at it. So you can see um, some coefficients are still quite large, which indicate that there wasn't a very good covariance balance for charter magnet, location size. Those are like the ones that are, these three are less than 0.1. I'm using 0.1 sun deviations here as my standard, which was suggested by Austin. Um, now for the outcome model, which is the next stage. So I'm, I'm satisfied with covariate balance for most variables, except for charter, magnet, and location size. Um, so I will, the, the variables that I'm not satisfied with covariate balance, I will include in the outcome model um, later. Okay, so um, let's see. I will first create a survey design. Um, I'll use the survey package to estimate the outcome model. Um, so I load it here. And then the, the model for the outcome, I mean, this first model um, is not, so the model for the outcome is, doesn't take it to, uh, it, we don't actually use it for causal inference. So we don't use the coefficients. It's just a step into, to obtain those response functions. So it's the outcome, which is the mean scale 2014 algebra end of course exam. And I have log log ins per examinee, log log ins of examinee squared, the generalized propensity score, generalized propensity score squared. They try, you know, try to get some quadratic terms here and the interaction. Um, I will run this. Um, and then for the actual dose response function, um, note, first notes that I didn't include uh, additional covariates. Here I could would be better to control for covariates that didn't achieve the target covariate balance. Uh, but I'm trying to simplify here at this point. Um, so for the for the dose response function, I will uh, first. Um, Plot. The, I will decide to plot the dose response functions at the percentiles from one percent to nine nine per, percentile, um, and um, and I use so the survey package allow me to get what the the uh, responses for each dose. Uh, I do that by predicting. Uh, the outcome for a certain dose, which is, you know, a quantile of dose, given all values of uh, the GPS, okay? And, and then I average, I use survey contrast here to average across all values of the GPS. And that's how I get my dose response function. Uh, so the, the, the first step is prediction for a dose response for all values of GPS. The second step is averaging across uh, the values I obtained in the, in the previous step. And that gives me a, the effect for that dose. Okay, so I'll run through the uh, for loop here. I want to run the first line, you have to create the object first. Okay, so running. 
Okay, so I, uh, I get the herder effects because I asked for uh, percentiles. So I'll visualize here, I will just print a discrete of effects. Okay, so these are my, my, my effects. Um, so I have um, the expected dose here for each, each level, which is this first column. Okay, so um, the next step is to plot this information. The second column here is the standard errors. So this is a dose, a response for a certain dose, uh, and this is a standard error. Uh, I will just verify this a little bit more. So create a dose response put labels, okay, so. Let's see how now I have the percentile, the log log is per XMD that corresponds to that percentile. The, so the log log is per XMD is the dose the mean scale 2014 is the response, and then we have this standard error here. And then I just do normal distribution, confidence intervals. I add them. So here I have nice table. Now most, um, I can actually look to see like these confidence intervals mostly overlap each other. So there is no, uh, significant difference in the effect of different doses. Um, so here I save it to a table, which is shown in the, in the book chapter, and then I plot. So uh, this is how you uh, use Hirano Imes dose response function method with uh, the assumption that the the dose of treatment is normally distributed.